this is the most dangerous complication of kidney disease. Three out of four CKD patients have it. It causes fatigue, headaches, hair loss, and it makes kidney disease progress faster. Why are doctors ignoring it? Catherine here. I have been helping kidney disease patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And today, we know very well that improving the main indicators of kidney health, such as GFR or creatinine levels, is always possible, even in stage 5 pre-dialysis. There is, however, one thing that can almost completely prevent any improvement whatsoever. It's having untreated or undiagnosed complications. Complications are diseases that are caused by CKD, all right? They can make your life very hard, especially because they need to be diagnosed and treated if you want to have a chance at improving your kidney health. And there is one complication in particular that most doctors are ignoring in today's clinical practice. It's anemia. Anemia is both very common and very often overlooked in CKD patients, as this recent study published on the AJKD proves. So the big question is, is anemia preventing you from improving your kidney health? Anemia is so common in CKD that it's considered one of the most frequent causes of fatigue and tiredness. And it can also cause headaches, problems with concentration, paleness, hair loss, dizziness, and difficulty breathing. These are some of the most commonly observed symptoms in people suffering from anemia. So if you have one or more of these symptoms and you are not being treated for anemia already, talk to your nephrologist, all right? This is very important. Most doctors are not going to do this for you. You have to ask. Now, there is a supplement that can make all the difference with anemia. This is L-carnitine. L-carnitine is actually an FDA-approved treatment for kidney disease, all right? Carnitine is a chemical that the body actually produces in the brain, liver, and kidneys. It's used mainly to turn fat into energy. But in people with kidney disease, the levels for this molecule are often too low and this is known to make anemia worse. This is a condition called secondary carnitine deficiency. And this is why supplementing just 1000 mg of this nutrient twice daily may make a huge difference. Now, carnitine may have many other benefits for those with kidney disease. It can effectively improve markers of inflammation. And keep in mind that inflammation is an extremely important cause of kidney damage and decreasing it means directly protecting your kidneys. L-carnitine can also seriously lower systolic pressure. In one study, 2 grams of acetyl L-carnitine per day resulted in an almost 10-point drop in systolic pressure, which is frankly amazing for a supplement you will be taking to help with anemia. And a different study on people with type 2 diabetes, carotene supplements significantly reduced sugar levels and improved insulin sensitivity compared to a placebo. And a recent analysis of clinical trials of subjects with diabetes found that acetyl L carnitine, 3 grams a day orally, for one year provided significant relief of nerve pain and improved vibration perception in those with diabetic neuropathy. So, yeah, supplementing this nutrient may have incredible benefits for you. Now, there is only a big problem with carnitine. It's approved for CKD, as I was saying but not in the form you can buy from Amazon, which is taken by mouth. It's only approved for administration via IV, all right? But why is that? Well, the reason is that carnitine isn't absorbed very well when taken orally. But when carnitine is injected, you are going to see huge benefits. And obviously, only your doctor can prescribe you carnitine via IV. So the big question is, are you getting the appropriate treatment for anemia? So guys, this is a question I want you to answer in comment section. 
Is your doctor testing you for iron levels? Are they giving you the appropriate treatment? Please let me know in comment section. If the answer is no, ask for a test, all right? Complete blood count or CBC test is an easy and reliable way of diagnosing anemia. And every single kidney disease patient is supposed to do these tests regularly. As I was saying in the beginning of the video, the vast majority of doctors are doing absolutely nothing when it comes to dealing with anemia. Treating anemia is something you absolutely need to do in order to treat CKD. But the problem here is that this proactive thinking has only shown up in recent years. A good portion of doctors are still going by old standards, which means they are just ignoring the issue. Now, Bear with me for a moment because this is a huge problem for anyone suffering from kidney disease. You see, according to studies, only 4% of people with anemia are receiving the appropriate attention. However, we also know that more than 50% of men with CKD have anemia. And when it comes to women, 70% or more have anemia. So about three out of four CKD patients have anemia. Now, what's shocking about that is that only 4% of patients are being treated. Even worse, most patients don't even have their iron levels checked. This is what a recent article published on Medscape says about the issue. According to the author of this article, and I quote, when physicians see CKD patients with anemia, they often make the assumption that the cause is anemia of CKD and thus they do not check iron levels. Okay, since when a doctor license has become a license to people? I mean, are you reading what I'm reading? This is like saying that your airline pilot for today is not going to check with the control tower if there are other planes on the strip before landing because they know that there are other planes. So they are just going to crash the plane and call it a day. But this is what this article says, all right? Most doctors today don't think they need to check you or treat you for anemia because they already know you have it. So why should they waste their precious time treating you when they could be, you know, playing golf instead? Now guys, today anemia is treatable. So most important thing we all can do is raising the awareness. This is why I am making this video today and you can help. Give this video a like and share with anyone you know who is suffering from kidney disease. You can help people by raising the awareness. So share this video now. What's more, there are also certain foods, lifestyle changes, supplements and medications that can really make a difference. And that's extremely important because for many patients, treating anemia can make all the difference between ending up in dialysis and starting to see their GFR improve. So, a very important thing you want to do if you have anemia is tune up the way you eat. Now guys, when it comes to anemia, the diet is crucial. Remember that anemia is caused by iron deficiency in most CKD patients, alright? So eat accordingly, but iron is not the easiest thing to get in a real diet. But don't go full liver king now just because plants don't have a lot of iron. There is a simple way to solve that. How? Eat more spinach. Spinach is probably the best food in the world when it comes to fighting anemia. Spinach is one of the best plant-based sources of iron, but spinach also contains significant amounts of nutrients that are key to improve iron levels, such as vitamin C. Another food you should always consider, oats. Oats are very healthy and very, very rich in iron. What not many people know about oats is that this food is so healthy and rich in nutrients, its consumption has been linked to improved serum albumin in CKD patients. 
Guys, it's not common to find foods that can directly improve nutritional status as effectively as oats. The only problem, oats don't have any vitamin C so be sure to eat them at the same time as a source of these nutrients such as strawberries, kiwis or lemon. One more food you should consider is green beans. While many legumes are rich in iron, great for anemia, they usually also come with too much protein for a renal diet. Protein is known for directly making CKD progress faster. Not something we want, absolutely. But green beans have very little protein in them and not just compared to other beans. You see, there is less protein in one cup of green beans than in one slice of bread. So make sure that green beans are a regular on your table. Maybe sauté them in an iron cask skillet to get even more iron. Guys, let's take a look at this table now. These are some of the best foods in the world for those wanting to lower their creatinine levels. The trick here is to eat foods rich in iron such as spinach, kale, Swiss chard, big greens at the same time as a food rich in vitamin C such as kiwi, lemon, strawberry and more. Doing this regularly will provide your body with enough iron and will make it bioavailable. This will make all the difference in the world. And what can be even more effective is to supplement the right vitamins for anemia. Now, vitamin C is crucial for anemia as we have seen. So the most common advice is to take a vitamin C supplement in a low dose, 60 to 100 milligrams at the same time as you eat a meal containing foods rich in iron or at the same time as iron supplements if you are taking non-heme iron supplements, all right? Now, another crucial vitamin to supplement when dealing with anemia or CKD in general is B9 or folate. Folate is involved in the production of hemoglobin and people with anemia really need more of that. Even more important, studies say that people in stage 3 of CKD who took 0.8 mg of folate, which is two times the RDA for this nutrient, had a significant slower progression of CKD. Another key nutrient is B12, also known as cobalamin. This is the energy nutrient and it's also crucial to fight anemia and lower creatinine levels. B12 is really important because it works together in the body with folate to create hemoglobin. And so many people are lacking this one, especially those following a plant-based or vegan diet will never get enough B12 as this is only present in animal foods. Keep in mind that a deficiency in any of these vitamins even alone can cause anemia. The other nutrient needed to make iron in the body is B6. There is no hemoglobin without B6 and deficiencies of this nutrient are too common to be ignored. In short, vitamin B6, vitamin B9 and vitamin B12 are key to fight anemia. It's almost impossible to get enough of them in a renal diet, especially B12. Supplementing them is crucial to fight anemia and kidney disease. Now question, what if nothing works? Well, these supplements in dietary choices are very important, but since anemia is caused by CKD, they are not always enough to solve the problem. This is when you need to talk to your doctor. Some patients may still need to take medications including erythropoietin and prescription iron in order to get their hemoglobin levels in check. So what this means is that you need to focus both on lifestyle choices and on prescription therapies in order to win this battle, alright? And yes, your doctor should be planning all this for you. But how often do they forget about that? Now guys, if you are worried about other things your doctor might have forgotten to tell you about, watch my recent video up here. It's all about the five things that all patients that are improving their GFR levels are doing. All the things that are a must when fighting CKD. Watch it now for more. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.